You're listening to episode 27 of the Wheeler's Dog Podcast. Hey, I'm Eugene B. Sams, and I do appreciate you tuning in to the Wheeler's Dog Podcast, and, uh... I'm telling you folks, if you did not get aboard the Patreon episode, the first one that uh, I've done since, you know, halting the pledge drive, I um, talked about the Mother's Day gift that I got the mill. Yeah, I got her a little inspiration jar full of like inspirational quotes. So whenever she's feeling down and depressed, she can always just pull one of those things out and read an uplifting message. So, yeah, that was on episode 26, patreon.com slash Wheeler's Dog. Four bucks, you get to unlock all the audio. But hey, this is the one, the Tuesday edition for all the masses. I got a late start on it, so hopefully Tim will get it out on Tuesday. Because I had lots of things to do today. And hobbling around was part of it. The gout still hasn't quite left me yet. It's still bothering me just a bit. It feels like there's a a baseball in the ball of my foot that's trapped, and I would love to just cut it out. And my ankle is still swollen, so getting up and down stairs, it's no fun. No fun. But over the weekend, I got some, uh, well, I contacted the CDC, and I needed some uh, gout contract or contact tracers. Yeah. I was looking for gout contact tracers to find out where this came from. How did I get the gout? I realize it comes from uh, eating lots of processed meats, uh, salty stuff like that. Um, Country ham and beef jerky, as I've said before, is is my trigger. And uh, when I have that, it's not very good. And I don't know why I let my guard down with that that ham that Chig's prepared, but I did, and I'm paying for it. And of course, you know, she's kind of gotten sick of me lazing about the house, not really doing anything. It's put put open it. It's put off the pool opening. Yeah, we've got an in-ground pool in the backyard, and I wanted to get it uncovered last Friday. My plan was to get it uncovered. The pool store that I know and trust here on Highway 150 in Arcadia, you know, they're not open on weekends. So I trust them, but they're not open on weekends. So I can't, I can't get their trusted advice. So I, um, well, I let the boys know that, hey, end of the week, I want to open the pool. And I was prepared to open it, gout or no gout. And get, you know, a few people to help pull the tarp off of it. All that stuff. It wouldn't really have been that big of a problem. But uh, the one kid decided that he was going to work. And the other kid decided that he was going to visit his father. So, I didn't complain. Of course, you know, Chiggs, you know, being a mama bear, she thought it was a complaint. But I was just like, hey, you know, it's just another week that it's not tacked onto the electric bill. So, you know, no big deal. And then this week, we're dealing with... Tropical Storm Arthur. He's off the coast. He's prepared to dump a lot of rain onto the triad of North Carolina. That's where we live. Well, we live outside of the triad, just kind of southwest of the triad. But, you know, we're expecting a lot of rain. And, of course, you know, I got the the tarp that covers the pool. It's all nice and dry. But with all this rain that we're expected to get with flash flooding... Uh, it's probably going to get, you know, at least four or five inches of rain on there. So I got to pump it all out again and start all over. And, you know, Chiggs is going to be furloughed the week of Memorial Day. And she wants to be floating around the pool. And I, I can't blame her, you know. You're going to be furloughed. You got the week off. You can't really go anywhere, you know, because we have stay-at-home orders and we're abiding by them. So, you know. There's no reason to take unnecessary chances. There's no reason to run off to mini bike week in Myrtle Beach, South Carolina, like a lot of people did. And I saw lots of people putting down Governor Cooper, the governor of the great state of North Carolina, and saying all kinds of nasty little things about him. But, you know, 
all these people that were just talking junk and how their rights are just being ignored and how they've gone down to South Carolina to go crazy. I got a feeling that some of those people are going to be coming back sick as dogs. Yeah. So, I don't want them to, but if they do happen to show up, it would be nice for me to just kind of see the post on social media and just go, uh-huh. Yep, yep, yep. Who's talking a big game now? So, anyway, I got my gout tracers to find out the origins of my gout. And they they contacted everybody that's, you know, ever been around me eating processed meat. Mainly my parents. So, they contacted my parents. And it seems they took it all the way back to pepperoni sticks. That's where it all began. You see, growing up in the Sims household, I was the picky eater of the bunch. I know, to look at me today, you would not think that this man, this bulk of a man, is a picky eater. But I am. Most of my bulk comes from the goodness of beer. Yeah, that's what's packed on the pounds for me, beer. Because, you know, when Chiggs and I were uh, cohabitating, yeah, before we got married, she was like, Wow, you really don't eat a whole lot. I really don't. I really don't. I don't eat all the good things that I should, but I don't eat a whole lot of bad stuff either. Beer. That's my downfall. I love beer. I don't drink to get drunk. I like the flavor of beer. I like all kinds of beers, from Pilsners to IPAs to, although I'm I'm IPA'd out, you know, to be honest with you. You know, I drink them, but... Uh, Right now, I'm in every, all the breweries are like in Pilsner kicks, which thrills me to death. I love a good Pilsner, and a lot of these craft breweries are making some great Pilsners. So, yes, I, I applaud you. Yes, but the contact tracers took it all the way back to pepperoni sticks. And I'm not talking about like these thin little sticks like, like Slim Jims or stuff like that. I'm talking about big round, like you slice off a piece of pepperoni. And that's what you put on a pizza. You know, that was my downfall. Because being a picky eater, let's say my family for dessert, hanging out in the the backyard or something like that, they would get this huge watermelon. I don't like watermelons. I think they're disgusting. Uh, I don't like the fleshy part. I don't like the flavor. I don't like anything about them. Yeah. I would get either... A box of Cracker Jacks, or somebody would get me a pepperoni stick, you know, like that. And I would chew on that thing. I'd I'd have like, you know, I don't know, three or four bites on it. And then I would pack it away and put it in the fridge and save it for later. You know, maybe watching Starsky and Hutch there on Saturday night at 10 o'clock. I would have, get out my pepperoni stick and gnaw on it a little bit. Until, you know, Huggy Bear shows up and then I put it back in the fridge. But, you know, that was me. I mean, I would have that pepperoni stick and eat on it for a few days. I mean, that was a treat to me. Pepperoni stick. And if I made good grades or something like that, did something fantastic and my parents were happy about, boom, throw a pepperoni stick into my lap. So, yeah, that's what the contract contact tracers found. Was it all began with those pepperoni sticks. My love for processed meats. So, there you go. Like I said, it's it's spread to my ankle. It's it's all kind of swollen. It's weird if you compare the, the foot to the other foot. It's just kind of weird. Not as swollen as it was, but hey, you know, I'm making do. I'm getting around. I'm totally getting around. Three guys sitting around talking about being a dad while drinking a beer. The Beer Dads Podcast is available everywhere you find podcasts and at tldpodnetwork.com. We talk about daddy issues, but in a good way. And the other night, sitting around with Bate and Bobby, we were discussing, like, uh, fears, irrational fears, or or fears of things that we might have lived through. Like, right now, we just sort of got talking about how kids today, you know, they might have nightmares later on about the the pandemic of 2020, you know, how the, it just upset their lives, changed everything. And, you know, it did. I mean, I think we're going to graduation tomorrow 
for the uh, the kid high school graduation, and it's kind of like one of these drive up deals where he's wearing his cap and gown in the car, but they drive up and hand him his diploma. So yeah, that's I'm the wheel man for that. And somebody's going to be sitting in the back seat, I think, uh, recording it on their cell phone. Or maybe he'll be in the back seat and somebody in the front seat will be recording this event. But, you know, it really sucks. I really hate it for for the kids today. The college graduates, the, the high school graduates. It's a real bummer. Now, don't get me started on this middle school graduation stuff and elementary school graduation. No, no, no. Those are not big, huge milestones. I, I hate this. I hate that people have made it a thing. As a matter of fact, I got invited to my, my niece's something or another graduation from elementary school. And I said, no, I'm not attending. I'm not sending a card. This is this is no milestone. Save it for high school, you know? Save it for college. Those are real things. Not, you know, you don't graduate for coloring or learning your ABCs or your multiplication table. I don't know why everybody feels that they have to have a graduation now. Yeah, but anyway, talking about irrational fears, maybe nightmares and stuff like that. I mean, I wonder if millennials, you know, kind of wake up and and worry about Y2K, you know. Is that, was that traumatic event for them, you know, growing up? Because, you know, I remember that very well. Used to work with a guy that took it very seriously, Got all kinds of water, supplies. He lived in a second-story apartment, but by golly, you would have thought he had a bomb shelter outside in the ground. I mean, he was prepared. You know what I mean? And, of course, that turned out to be nothing. But I will tell you one of my irrational fears. I don't have it so much anymore because sane people have told me that uh, it's stupid. As a matter of fact, my good friend Robin, who lives down in Atlanta, when I told her about it, she just started laughing in my face. Yeah, how's that for support from your friends? But she thought it was the most hysterical thing she'd ever heard. Well, my rational fear was um, getting scurvy. I was worried about getting scurvy. Why? Well, like I discussed before with the watermelon, I'm not a big eater of fruits. You know what I mean? Not a big eater of vegetables. I mean, I like the the most hated vegetables, the Brussels sprouts, the, the broccoli, the cauliflower. I eat that stuff. Spinach. Gosh. When I found out you can make salads out of spinach, I've been eating salads ever since. Because my parents ate all that nasty iceberg stuff. Ugh. Ugh hate iceberg lettuce, but you know, I had no idea until my wife turned me on to it like 10 years ago. She's, she's like, I'm going to fix you a salad. And I was like, I don't like iceberg lettuce. No. And she thought it was hysterical that I, I didn't realize that you could make salads out of just about anything. I like romaine. I think that's okay. A nice spring mix. But when it comes to salad, spinach, that's my go-to. But I was always afraid of getting scurvy because I didn't think I got a, a whole lot of vitamin C, you know? I don't eat oranges. I, I don't eat fleshy fruits because the texture of the, the fruit itself, it's all slimy and everything. And for some reason, it just hits my gag reflex. Apples are the same way, that crunchy stuff. Ugh. Ugh. Plus, I can't bite into an apple anymore. Not with all this uh, bridge work, dental work, and... It's a bit painful, so I can't really do that. I suppose I could do it in slices, but I don't like it. I don't even like applesauce. Blech. So, you know, I figured I didn't get a whole lot of vitamin C. So I thought for sure I'm going to get scurvy. I would take vitamin C supplements, like, you know, 1,000 milligrams vitamin C just to make sure that I wouldn't go get scurvy. I was definitely afraid of it. And then when my friend Robin just laughed in my face and she's like, hey, you ever eat uh, potatoes? I said, yeah, why? She's like, there's vitamin C in that. So, yeah, she got a good laugh. I, I thought it was rather mean of her. But, hey, you know, I guess I was being silly. I never really thought about it. You know, I'm sure that I'm probably deficient on a lot of 
vitamins, but uh, for some reason, scurvy just kind of just kind of grabbed me by the by the short hairs. I just, whew, I was definitely afraid of getting scurvy. And I'm also going to tell you about an irrational fear that I had as a child. Uh, I embarrassed my parents at their high school reunion one time. Because I had a little flip out episode concerning this irrational fear. Let me go ahead and preface it with this. I got bit by a tick. I was very young. I would say maybe six, seven. I was bitten by a tick. And apparently I got Rocky Mounted Spotted Fever. And so... I had a very high temperature, and I still have a vivid memory of laying in my bed, you know, just sweating from the fever. And no matter what, everybody, you know, was in the room, the curtains, I had two windows in that room, one of them facing me directly, and the other one over to my left. And those curtains... For some reason, I had the DTs, you know, of seeing things. And those curtains were moving, breathing, wing flapping, you know, kind of like, maybe not flapping, but kind of stretching, like butterflies. You know how butterflies do? Butterflies sit down and they just kind of move their wings. They spread them and they bring them back up. They spread, bring back up, spread, maybe leave them spread a little bit, then bring them back up. And my curtains were covered with these butterflies. I mean, you know, it's traumatic enough going through this. But I was, you know, having a hard time with the the curtains and stuff. And I I remember telling my mother, you know, hey, the the curtains, they're they're covered with butterflies. And, And she's like, no, no, they're not. You're just seeing things. You know, but I was seeing it. I got an irrational fear, you guessed it, of butterflies. Yeah. My sister Tina, she thinks this is a damn hoot. She likes to bring it up. Especially, you know, with new girlfriends and and then chigs. You know, she got the treatment too. Yeah, she liked to embarrass her, her older brother. And that's okay. She can get her kicks, you know. I'm telling all of you right now that I had the irrational fear of butterflies. No joke, but it came from a traumatic experience. So you see what I'm saying? I mean, I would see a butterfly and you know how they flutter around. You don't know where them SOBs are going. No, you don't. They, they they look like they could go anywhere. They could change on a dime. They're gone. Coming for your throat. Trying to burrow into your ear. Get into your brain and make you go insane. So that was the the kind of fear I had. I mean, I didn't know what those butterflies had plans for me once I passed out from from the fever and the meds. But I was scared to death of them. I'd see them in the front yard. I'd run in the house. Yeah, summers were horrible for me. That I guess it was one summer that I had that fear until I finally got over it. And, and it took, um, gosh, I, I don't even remember who it was. Ah, uh, that got me over to the fear. They had butterflies. They had like a collection of them and they were showing me a collection of butterflies and telling me what all the good butterflies do and everything. Gosh, I can't even remember this person's name. Oh, well, it's gone. They're much older and, and, you know, they've, they've moved on out of this world. But, you know, back to my parents, you know, the graduation thing. We go to their uh, Greenville High School graduation uh, in um, Sarton, West Virginia. That's where the old uh, schoolhouse is. I don't know what it is now. It could be a house. Somebody could be living in it. But it was a very small, tiny school, two floors, and it was just like right on the side of the road. It's still there. So it's, uh, you know, I pass by it every so often when I'm up there. But uh, I remember for the the graduation, there were all these people, or the, should say the, uh, class reunion. There were all these people standing outside of the, the, the school, right? 
and we had to park way back. And my dad was driving a 1971 Grand Torino. I'm sorry, not Grand Torino, Torino 500. And I remember getting out of the back seat of the car. You know, dad would pull the seat forward and I got out of the back seat and I started screaming my little ass off. There's a butterfly. I'm screaming. I'm clawing my way back into the car. I'm losing my mind. And I could, I could tell, you know, my parents are like, will you be quiet? Will you calm down? Will you just be quiet? And everybody could hear over there. I don't remember even looking over there. I just remember looking out of the windows for more butterflies because, you know, I was under attack. Yeah. I was fearing for my life, but eventually I got over that. And, uh, you know, for some reason, my sister likes to bring it up. She thinks it's a real hoot and it is. I mean, it's funny. It's funny. I, I can, I can poke fun at myself, but I had a legitimate reason. I was, I was at death's door. Yeah. Having DTs. And if you've ever had DTs, they're not fun. No. It's like a bad acid trip. The oldest, longest, continuously running pop culture podcast in North Carolina, The Less Desirables, brings you the movers and shakers that make Winston-Salem unique. Available everywhere you find podcasts and at tldpodnetwork.com. Well, folks, it looks like I've got another short one. To be honest with you, I didn't have a whole lot to really talk about this week because, you know, being in a sort of on my butt for most of the week. I didn't really get out and have too many adventures, anything like that. Didn't uh, notice anything odd. Mm -mm. And by the way, the, well, the only thing odd that I've noticed is Chiggs for some reason is watching this horrible reality series on Netflix. It's called married at first sight. Yeah. I don't understand it. I don't know why, but she's intrigued by this show. At least it's got her off Tiger King, and she actually asked me this evening for dinner. She was like, hey, do you want to come outside uh, into the game room and watch this with me while we eat? No, thanks. <laughs> I got to go record a podcast. So, yeah, the podcast got me out of that one. But, folks, I do appreciate you tuning in, taking a listen to the Wheeler's Dog podcast. And, again, don't forget, patreon.com slash Wheeler's Dog, four bucks Unlocks all the audio. Eight bucks gets you into the Behind the Bark VIP with extra little goodies, which I've got something planned for all my VIPs real soon. And also, don't forget to call the Wheeler's Dog Speak Line. Yeah! 336-422-6006. No one's going to pick up. So if you've got any questions, you've got any comments, or you just want to shoot the breeze. Or maybe you've got an opinion on something. Maybe you've got an irrational fear that you'd like to unburden yourself with. Put it on the speak line. 336-422-6006. Maybe you've had the DTs. Maybe you'd like to talk about that. Maybe you've got the gout. Hell, I've been talking about it for several weeks now. So, hey, anyway... I think the Chigs is on her way down here. Nope, I don't hear any footsteps. So, yeah. I heard her yelling for me. Maybe you heard her as well. But it's time for me to wrap this up, folks. Again, I appreciate the, everything that you've done for me. Wheeler's Dog Speak Line 422-6006, area code 336. And again, thanks to my buddy Tim Beeman from the Less Desirables Network who uh, puts this out on all the outlets where you pick up podcasts and also makes me the video for the YouTube channel that I've got. Yeah, the Wheeler's Dog YouTube channel. So if you like listening to the podcast, but hey, you want to do it on YouTube, knock yourself out. Subscribe to it already. Give the page a like on Facebook, Wheeler's Dog. And don't forget to follow on Twitter, Wheeler's Dog, or at Wheeler's Dog, and Instagram, Wheeler's Dog Podcast. Folks, I'm getting on out of here. Coming for your throat. Trying to burrow into your ear. 
Get into your brain and make you go insane.